earth. We are called losers, but the true losers are down there on Wall Street. They were bailed out by billions of our money. We are called socialists. We are called socialists. But here there already is socialism for the rich. They say we don't respect private property. But in the 2008 financial crashdown, more hard-earned private property was destroyed than if all of us here were to be destroying it night and day for weeks. They tell you we are dreamers. The true dreamers are those who think things can go on indefinitely the way they are. We are not dreamers. We are the awakening. We are the awakening. We are the awakening from a dream which is turning into a nightmare. We are not destroying anything. We are only witnessing how the system is destroying itself. We all know the classic scene from cartoon. The cat cat reaches a precipice, but it goes on walking, Ow! ignoring the fact that there is nothing beneath its ground. Only when it looks down and notices it, it falls down. It falls down! This is what we are doing here. We are telling the guys there on Wall Street, look down! Hey, hey look, look down! In, in, in mid-April 2011, in mid-April 2011, the Chinese government prohibited on TV, in films and in novels all stories that, uh, that contain alternate reality or time travel. This is a good sign for China. It means people still dream about alternatives. So you have to prohibit this dreaming. Here we don't need a prohibition because the ruling history has, has even uh, oppressed our capacity to dream. Look at the movies that we see all the time. It's easy to imagine the end of the world, an asteroid destroying all life and so on. But you cannot imagine the end of capitalism. So what are we doing here? Let me tell you a wonderful old joke from communist times. A guy was sent from East Germany to work in Siberia. He knew his mail will be read by censor. So he told his friends, let's establish a code. If a letter you will get from me is written with uh, blue ink, it is true what I say. It is true what I say. If it is written in red ink, it is false. After a month, his friends get a first letter. Everything is in blue. It says this letter. Everything is wonderful here. Stores are full of good, of good food. Movie theaters show good films from the West. Apartments are large and luxurious. The only thing you cannot buy is red ink. <laughs> this is how we live. We have all the freedoms we want. But what we are missing is red ink, the language to articulate our non-freedom. The way we are taught to speak about freedom. The way we are taught to speak about freedom. War on terror and so on falsifies freedom. And this is what you are doing here. You are giving all of us red ink. There is a danger. There is a danger. Don't fall in love with yourselves. Don't fall in love with yourselves. We have a nice time here. But remember, carnivals come cheap. What matters is the day after when we will have to return to normal life. Will there be any changes then? I don't want you to remember these days. You know, like, oh, we were young, it was beautiful. Remember that. Our basic message is, we are allowed to think about alternatives. The taboo is broken. We do not live in the best possible world. But there is a long road ahead. There are truly difficult questions that confront us. We know what we do not want. But what do we want? What social organization can replace capitalism? What type of new leaders do we want?
Remember, the problem is not corruption or greed. The problem is the system. It pushes you to be corrupt. Beware not only of the enemies, but also of false friends who are already working to dilute this product. In the same way you get coffee without caffeine, beer without alcohol, ice cream without fat. They will try to make this into a harmless moral protest, a decaffeinated process. But the reason we are here is that we have enough of a world where to recycle Coke cans to give a couple of dollars for charity or to buy a Starbucks cappuccino where 1% goes for third world starving children is enough to make us feel good. After outsourcing work and torture, after the marriage agencies are now outsourcing even our love life, dating, after the, uh, the marriage agencies, okay? After marriage agencies are outsourcing even our love life. Even our love life. We can see that for a long time. We can see that for a long time. We allowed our political engagement also to be outsourced. We want it back. We are not communists. Communism means the system which collapsed in 1990. Remember that today, those communists are the most efficient, ruthless capitalists. In China today, we have capitalism which is even more dynamic than your American capitalism, but doesn't need democracy. Which means when you criticize capitalism, don't allow yourself to be blackmailed. You are against democracy. The, the marriage between democracy and capitalism is over. The change is possible. The change is, the change is, the change is possible. The change is possible. How? What do we consider today possible? Just follow the media. On the one hand, technology and sexuality, everything seems to be possible. You can travel to the moon, you can become immortal, biogenetics, you can have sex with animals or whatever. But look at the field of society and the economy. There, almost every, anything is considered impossible. You want to raise taxes a little bit for the rich? They tell you it's impossible. We lose competitivity. You want more money for healthcare? They tell you impossible. This means totalitarian state. Isn't it something wrong in a world where you are promised to be immortal, but cannot spend a little bit more for healthcare? Maybe we can to set our priorities straight here. We don't want higher standard of living. We want better standard of living. We want better standard of living.